Welcome to another episode of Cyber Secrets. Good morning. In this episode, I want to talk about a good open source intelligence gathering tool or OSINT tool called OSINT Framework. So the website is OSINTFramework.com. And the person that built this uh, actually got a lot of the resources that they've used and tried to make a, uh, a usable interface for everybody else. And what's nice is it's usually kept pretty up to date. So a couple things on the right-hand side, it gives you kind of a, a map of certain uh, items that you might see. For example, like the T, it's a very important one, that's T for tool. So for example, if we're gonna to go to under username, I'll go under uh, username search engines. We see this name check, here's a tool, and what's my name is also a tool. These means you're gonna to have to download them and install them. The others are gonna be just domain searches. So one that I do like, uh, I do like name check, I'll we'll select name checker, do just name check. We'll do a search for cyber secrets. And immediately, it's able to tell us what domains are available and which ones are not. And we want to look at it from the opposite side again. So we'll look for the ones that are not available. So we we'll try to verify these to see if they're actually uh, connected to uh, the potential target or suspect uh, that you're doing an investigation on. Again, this, uh, when you're looking at OSINT, think about it uh, is it's an investigation. And it can be used from the pen tester side to try to, again, identify a little bit more information about the target or investigator side as well. And then also down a little bit further, same thing as namechecker.com. It's also checking all these sites. And it is a good idea to use multiple tools together and then correlate the information. Because sometimes one tool will uh, get access to some resources, see if it doesn't. And sometimes there's gonna be both false positives and false negatives. So if I scroll up a little bit, we have Facebook for Cyber Secrets, uh, which ties to our group, Slack. Uh, you have uh, a couple others, Hacker News, ties to Cyber Secrets. So the ones that are green are the ones that are available and the ones that was not able to verify. Same thing here, it's still working. So <laughs> move this uh, demo along. Go back over to GitNosa you know, Framework. You have some content related to domain. Again, looking at uh, looking for subdomains, things in that area. Most of these are going to be tools. So again, like we're talking about, uh, you need to download them like the Harvester. Uh, with that said, you do have Sublister. Sublister, again, is a tool. Uh, so it should have a T here. But a couple of these are ones you can actually just do online search as well. Uh, with the tools, I know with uh, environments like CSI Linux, they do use uh, four or five different uh, uh, subdomain search tools to get a better um, view of what's possibly there. So I'm gonna go down one further. Let's do uh, IP address. So I'll go ahead and close this one out. Same thing. Uh, one thing I did want to mention with geolocation, this is kind of a tricky one. So geolocation, when you're trying to find out where the IP address is actually located, this is not as accurate as a lot of people would like to believe. Um, this usually ties down to IP address and the registration address of that IP address range. Uh, think of that as the ISP. The ISP allocates a specific number of IP addresses, then it uh, puts a, uh, an address to that, which is usually, for example, uh, some sort of uh, central office, uh, CO, things of that area. So this is not gonna be related directly to where the specific uh, um, user of that IP address is, but it will be tied directly to the registration of that IP. So at that point, from an investigation standpoint, you can actually go forward and then contact the ISP to get the individual user account information, things in that area, which you may be court order. If you're going from a pen tester's point of view, at least it usually gives you a relatively accurate location about where the, uh, the target's probably going to be. With that said, it, as far as country, it's extremely accurate. Uh, I live in the U.S. As far as state, it's usually pretty accurate. As far as town or city, it's a coin flip. It depends on how well the organization keeps up their, their records uh, with their IP address ranges. 
For example, uh, I have one ISP um, here in Colorado. I'm about two hours uh, both north and south of Denver. Uh, that shows me that I am in Denver. I go through another ISP and it shows the towns that I'm actually in. So it, the uh, reliability of the geolocation all comes down to the internet service provider and their ability to uh, keep good records. So again, you can get uh, again, at least ownership, um, social media networks, Instagram networks. Uh, with the instant messaging, a lot of these are going to be uh, tools. You have people search engines. Uh, some of these you will have to pay for. I know especially here with uh, General, there's a few of them that are relatively inexpensive. Some of them are actually quite pricey. But and as you can see, there's a lot of different uh, um, subcategories of tools that are useful when trying to uh, gain information related to, again, either investigation or pen test on your recon phase. Thank <laughs> you.